Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage advisor to the United Nations Secretary General's Envoy for Financing the Health Millennium Development Goals and for Malaria, and Interim Coordinator for the Nigeria Private Sector Health Alliance. There is a goal and which is to eradicate um, disease and which is to achieve, if you like, the, the three MDG health-related uh, uh, goals. So whilst, yes, we would like to pick and choose which sectors, which segments, and which commodities, and prescribe you know, how you know, things should be done, um, one way or the other, we need to marry you know, the public good and, and um, uh, address things from a more, holistic, a more holistic perspective. From the public perspective, it's not only the government that is really trying to drive this, I also see complementary hands from the private sector. The Saving One Million Lives initiative actually is one of those platforms for us to mobilize, to create a movement around improving health outcomes in Nigeria. And the whole, whole idea in Nigeria seems to be, from the private sector point of view, that we are seeing very serious progress being made by our government. The private sector likes to be you know, associated with success and with excellence, and, and is doing uh, and indeed, the, the, the government is doing some pretty interesting things. Let's make this engagement between the private sector, the public sector, and of course, even the civil society much more structured, and let's do it in an enduring and uh, sustainable fashion. And so we, 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 we brainstormed a bit and decided to put together a strategy, and um, very exciting things are beginning to take place. Malnutrition is a detractor of the human capital pool that we have. The cognitive deficit accruing to our economy because of malnutrition is significant. So to deal with it has an advantage for overall economic development, but the private sector also has an interest in ensuring that we have a healthy, capable workforce that will be employers, consumers in the future. So that's really how nutrition evolved as a key aspect, uh, one of those areas where in the medium term we hope the private sector alliance will complement what government is trying to do in the agriculture ministry as well as with the saving one million lives in the health sector to see that we move our economy going forward. So I think generally across the globe, um, the, the private sector is not as aware as it should be of how great, if you like, the business opportunities are in the various you know, health uh, value chains. If you look at investing in the health space, and I'm, if, if I'm looking at it like a finance person, it's almost like a, a blue ocean opportunity. You know, you can pick and choose literally, you know, where you want to play. And if you do it sensibly, you know, it will be profitable. From the Nigerian Private Sector Health Alliance perspective, the, the, one of the things that we set out to do is to create a marketplace, if you like, uh, for networking, for education, and for mapping, if you like, um, uh, what is happening in the Nigerian uh, health environment. Indeed, actually, we had a discussion. Um, maybe we could pick a few commodity value chains um, linked to, of course, you know, specific diseases or specific health challenges and literally map the entirety of, of the Nigerian health space as far as those issues are concerned. Who are the players? What are the issues? What are the geographies? You know, what are the regulations around them and so on? Innovative financing is also something that we've been talking about. If you have a hospital, uh, and this is public sector funded or private sector funded in Nigeria, and you want to invest in uh, health infrastructure and equipment, whatever it is, it's almost impossible to get financing for it, okay? And this is the issue of ignorance that I've been talking about. But the reality is that because obviously these uh, items of uh, equipment are in scarce supply, the demand is incredible. So one, whenever you put one of these machines somewhere, uh, literally they pay for themselves in a very short space of time. And so one of the things we are going to do is put in place an equipment um, financing scheme targeted at uh, infrastructure for the health space. Uh, this is something that Access Bank is driving. You know, we're sure that it's something that others are going to, are going to uh, quickly jump on. The private sector has to understand um, uh, much better the role and uh, um, the relevance, if you like, of civil society. And that's one of my, my strong learning points. The innovations that we've tried to create in the health sector, the Saving One Million Lives, we've worked with many private entities and we've found them very nimble and willing to innovate, to take risks that ordinarily from government it would be a little bit more difficult to take those risks. If you look, at, for example, at malaria, and I look at this as a, you know, if I look at 
this from a business perspective. You know, I, you, I look at malaria, and at the end of the day, really, it's, um, it's, it's not that difficult. The demographic realities, the cultural realities, the sheer numbers we're dealing with, and, and, and other issues, and then, of course, the poverty factor makes it impossible for one person to try and solve the problem, even if you had all the money in the world. So partnerships are, are, are a necessary uh, approach to dealing with this. And that goes to the issue of why the Health Alliance in itself is, is fundamental, because what the Health Alliance will try to do is to make, uh, make these partnerships work, you know, create a structure, literally an enabling marketplace for partnerships to thrive. When we launched the Saving One Million Lives Initiative, I think we had more than 20 different private sector partners of different uh, uh, kinds, globally, but also nationally, who somehow participated or contributed. There's a lot of diversity, but each partner has something of value to offer. So it's identifying what is that of value and how do you harness it? And that's the role that government, I think, is uniquely positioned to convene in a country like ours.